Lesson 9, Materials and Shaders Hello fellow game designers, welcome to the Wicked Cat Unity Introduction course. On the next couple of lessons, we will show you how to import 3D assets into Unity and get them ready to be used in games. Step 1, Materials and Shaders On the last video you created several materials to be used in the 3D model you imported to your Unity project. The materials define how your object is displayed. The properties of a material can change depending of the shader it uses, however, you will frequently find these three properties in materials. Shader Main Color Base On shader you can select the shader that will be used by the material. The main color allows you to apply color tint to the material. If you don't want to use any tint, keep the color white. Finally, on base you select the texture to be used by the material. All rendering in Unity is done with shaders. A shader is a computer program that is used to do shading, the production of appropriate levels of color within an image, or, in the modern era, also to produce special effects or do video post-processing. In Unity, Shaders are small scripts that let you configure how the graphics hardware is set up for rendering. You can change the shader of a material by expanding the shader drop-down in the Inspector tab. The selected shader will dictate the properties of the material you can change. If you have applied the material to an active object in the scene, you will see your property changes applied to the object in real time. Unity already contains some built-in shaders, but you can create your own shader using the Shader Lab language. However, keep in mind that getting a shader to work well on a variety of graphics cards is not an easy task, since it requires a fairly comprehensive knowledge of how graphics cards work. Step 2. Applying Shaders Since we want our material to use the normal map we created on Photoshop, and to have a metallic look, we will have to change the shader. To do this, we select our material, and on the top of the inspector, we select the shader. As you can see, you have several options that you can choose. We will use the bump specular shader. Once you select the new shader, you will notice that the properties of the material will change. In our case we will have three new parameters, specular color, shininess, and normal map. We will take a closer look at each built-in shader on the next couple of videos, for now, just drag the normal that matches the texture to the correct field, and change the shininess value to give it a more metallic look. We will repeat this process for all materials except for the wheels. Since the tires are made of rubber, we don't want them to shine. However, we still want to use a normal map to make them more realistic. To do this we will use the Bump Diffuse Shader. As you can see, this shader is very similar to the Diffuse Shader, which is the default shader when you create a new material. The only difference is that contains a normal map parameter. Just like we did before, we drag the corresponding normal map to its field on the material. Step 3. Applying the materials. To apply a material, you must drag the 3D mesh to your scene. Now, all you need to do is to select a material from the project tab, drag it to the model on the scene and drop it on the mesh. 
This will apply the material to your model. Repeat this process until all pieces of the model have materials applied. This concludes our lesson for today. On the next video we will start taking a closer look at the shaders Unity has to offer and the differences between them. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to our channel. If you have any doubts or feedback, leave it on the comment section below. Until next time, and keep doing awesome games.